looking forward to hearing from the speakers this morning. And the first up uh, is Brad Rogers, who's the Managing Director and CEO of Jupiter Mines. Thanks for the introduction, uh, Carl, and thank you, Bill, for the opportunity to speak. And um, thank you very much to the Minister for coming all the way here. It is a long way, but we do appreciate it. And we appreciate it in particular at Jupiter because South Africa is our only focus. Um, so you mentioned a moment ago, welcoming investors to South Africa, we're way ahead of you. Um, so we've been there since 2010, invested in a really important mine in the world of manganese called Tipi. Uh, Jupiter owns 49.9% of that uh, mine and it's been operating successfully since 2012. We think we're a really good example of successful investment in South Africa, and our plan is to do more of that. Um, we regard ourselves as a South African-Australian uh, business. We are listed here, but our only investment is in South Africa. Uh, we have a strategy to grow that I'll talk through in a moment, and it's entirely focused on South Africa. Our largest shareholder at Jupiter, Instant Bitly Holdings, is a very prominent, successful um, South African business. So, Jupiter today is the largest listed manganese mining company in the world, um, but we're also the largest listed company here in Australia that's focused only on South Africa. And so this conference is very important to us. We really appreciate um, the opportunity to further these ties and we're happy to do our bit, hopefully as a good example of how you can be successful operating in South Africa. So, We've been up and running for a while. Um, Jupiter has 49.9% of the mine. We have some co-investors uh, with us at that mine. The mine is run by a team, and I'll show you a video uh, by one of those team members later on. Uh, but apart from being a financial success, um, this story is also a really good example of how to do things right, we think, with respect to empowerment and also the local community and I'll give you a little bit more uh, flavour on that later on. The Minister mentioned that uh, mining in South Africa is a sunrise industry, and we completely agree, and the Minister also called out manganese, and uh, unlike uh, perhaps gold, where there are still some great opportunities, uh, but South Africa might be sleeping in the league tables, in terms of manganese, South Africa is the number one in rising. 36% um, of the world's production of manganese today comes from South Africa. As I'll show you in a moment, as the Minister mentioned it also, 73% of the world's manganese reserves are in South Africa, actually in a really tightly packed space of land in the Northern Cape. That contrasts with the rest of the world, including here in Australia, where manganese mines are running out of mine life. And so with an excess of reserves over production, from a global production share, South Africa will grow, it, grow its share and there's an opportunity because you've got mines like ours, Tipi, that has more than 100 years of mine life remaining, open cast pit, already a top five producing asset. There will be an opportunity for mines like our own to grow that production and to grow the share um, of, uh, of global production that's coming out of South Africa. We have a strategy to do that in a way that's bringing capital from here and elsewhere in the world to South Africa, um, to do that in a very local way. Uh, so our plan um, that I'll show you in a moment, sitting behind that is a very firm focus on ensuring that we are bringing value to the local communities, that we are bringing value to South Africa, and we're executing overall in a way um, that is South African, and as I said, we're operationally South African today. The opportunity in manganese is in South Africa, uh, and it's quite valuable if you look at the long-term backdrop and outlook for manganese to be able to grow uh, in that thematic. So, Chippy, as I mentioned there, you can see some key stats on the mine on the page there, more than 100 years of mine life remaining, but on the top uh, bottom left-hand corner of that page, you can see other South African manganese mines. Uh, that all also have a long uh, period of time remaining. And that does contrast with a number of mines here in Australia, in Brazil, China and elsewhere that have been important mines for the last 50 or 60 years but are coming to end of mine life in the next 10 years or so. 
And obviously, if you've got operating mines with a long mine life remaining, particularly if, like Tippy, you have an open cast uh, mine plan, there's an opportunity to step into uh, that um, that uh, opportunity that's coming because supply elsewhere in the world is running off, and you have globally competitive manganese mines uh, here in here in South Africa. Chippy is a cost-efficient mine. Bottom right-hand corner, you can see uh, the earnings in the columns for Chippy as against the manganese price over that same period of time. And you can see through the cycle, obviously, manganese prices move around, and they've been on a bit of a wild ride uh, this year, and currently actually below. Uh, the average uh, for that period shown, as you can see there on the page. Uh, but Chippy, because it is focused on, on costs and it's a well-run mine by a team at the mine, uh, has been profitable through that period of time. So much so that in the six years since Jupiter has been listed, we've paid 20.2 cents of dividends to our shareholders, which is more than our market cap today, and that mine has more than 100 years of mine life remaining. Um, so uh, we're off to a good start, um, but against the manganese market outlook that I mentioned a moment ago, we plan to do more. We plan to grow our production. I'll talk more about that in a minute. So there's an aerial photo of the Kalahari manganese field. Um, the mine that we are invested in today is boxed out in orange there. It's a mine called Tippy, And you can see it's at the southern end uh, of the main section of the Kalahari manganese field. You can also make out there, no doubt, that those mines are cheek by jowl. That, that photo is 32 kilometres north to south, and in that photo, uh, you have 73% of the world's manganese reserves. Most starkly, you can see our mine, uh, Tippy, is actually um, almost co-located with South 32 and Anglo's Mamatuan mine immediately next door. So I'm making this point uh, to, I guess, deliver the message the minister made a moment ago that um, South Africa has a great opportunity here. We want to play our role in bringing growth capital to South Africa in order to deliver value um, from that uh, backdrop. And because the mines are so tightly packed together, obviously that presents opportunities around uh, logistics, around management, around mine planning as well, to be able to do that in the most efficient way uh, for all of the stakeholders in South Africa and for the investors. Long term, um, the outlook for manganese is quite positive. I'm showing there on the uh, left hand side a column which shows very long term forecasts from Bloomberg. The orange column is demand for manganese uh, units and the supply is uh, running out the world supply of manganese. And you can see at the end of this decade, because there are going to be some mines coming to end of mine life in that period, there's an evident um, supply gap opening up. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about expanding the production of Chippy uh, and generally expanding our ownership of manganese production in uh, South Africa. It's against that backdrop. There won't actually be a supply gap uh, for manganese. There's plenty of manganese in the world. But as we saw on the photo a moment ago, a lot of it's located in that photo in South Africa. And so that is why we think South Africa and the investors in manganese in South Africa have a good opportunity to uh, help the world to avoid that supply gap and deliver value in doing it because you've got some great assets there with a lot of uh, time remaining. So Jupiter's five-year strategy you can see on the page there. Uh, it's a strategy that we're a couple of years into and we're busy on all elements of that strategy. Uh, the first element, which we call fittest in the field, i.e. most efficient in the Kalahari manganese field, is focused in a number of areas. One of them is in logistics. Um, prior to joining Jupiter, my background was in uh, bulk logistics. Rail, as we all know, is constrained for bulk uh, miners in South Africa. There are good moves afoot um, between industry uh, and government in order to address that, which is good to see. But in the meantime, we're all truck hauling a lot of our production. And that's um, an inefficient thing to do, obviously, relative to rail. But the method in which that is being done within South Africa uh, is more inefficient than it needs to be. And so we've got some ideas around how we can reduce the number of trucks uh, and also improve the performance to drive cost efficiencies, but also to drive safety and community uh, benefits. And so that's uh, part of our focus in that area. Chippy, as I showed you a moment ago, is already a cost-efficient 
uh, mind, but inflation in the world is a real thing. We need to stay vigilant and focused on continuing uh, to make sure that that's the case so that when manganese prices come down as they are now, uh, the mine is still profitable and still cash generative. There's no debt at Chippy. It's been very conservatively uh, run, uh, and that's very intentional. And so we want to make sure we're defending this great asset so that we can use it as a platform for the growth that you can see on the page here. I'll come back to industry leadership in a moment. moment. Um, we have a ESG strategy, and I'll actually spend a bit of time in this presentation talking about that. Uh, but really, there's already a great story there, and I'll drill down and show you some examples of that in a moment. So from a Jupiter perspective, what we're doing is telling that story that's been there since the inception of Chippy, but Jupiter hasn't done a fulsome job of explaining that to our investors who are interested. Obviously, you want to continue moving forward with that. Uh, an obvious thing to do for a mine like Chippy is to put in a solar plant and batteries uh, at Chippy, and the work planning for that is underway. We are connected to the grid. We do have our own diesel-fired power station that was built before we were connected to the grid. Uh, but from an ESG perspective and also from a cost perspective, putting in solar makes a lot of sense. And so that's really a um, hallmark project within that part of our strategy. I'll also talk in a minute about um, our work that we're doing to investigate taking low-grade manganese ore, what we call low-grade, 30 to 32% manganese material, and converting it into battery-grade manganese. So uh, we're another one of those that's looking at this critical uh, mineral space, and we are mindful of doing that again in a way that delivers as much value to local communities uh, as possible for that strategy. So I'll talk more about that in a moment. Industry leadership. So this is really um, backdropped by the macro that we just saw a moment ago. South Africa has uh, an abundance of manganese ore in the ground. Five of the top 10 producing manganese assets in the world already from a production level perspective. And really all of the remaining mine lives that are important on the graph I showed you before sitting in South Africa. The rest of the world is running out of um, manganese ore from existing higher grade mines and South Africa has an opportunity uh, to solve that problem and do that way valuably. Uh, already the number one country in the world and the share of manganese production will grow uh, for that reason. So we are setting up our strategy both at TIPI uh, with our co-shareholders there but also beyond TIPI in order to um, step into that thematic. And so TIPI has the ability to lift its production at the right time. When manganese prices are low like they are right now, uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but in three, four, five years' time, it will make sense. Uh, and there will be a need for more manganese ore in the world. And the easiest way to solve that is to do that from already existing manganese mines like Tippy. We're already busy uh, on all elements of that strategy. Uh, as you can see there, uh, we launched our inaugural ESG report earlier this year. We're about to provide an update on that with our annual report that will be coming out later uh, next year. Uh, we also put out a scoping study on our electric vehicle um, battery uh, strategy, our, our plans to potentially enter that market. Uh, and we're busy working on the pre-feasibility study in that area currently. Uh, and the other two areas as well are also underway, particularly in the area of how can we continue to um, do better on, on logistics as part of that, and then planning for the future of, um, of greater manganese need, how can we plan ahead of that in a valuable way. So then diving into a couple of those areas of the strategy now, um, I'll spend a few slides talking about ESG in particular, and we'll hear in a minute from Mpo Siddiqui, who heads up uh, this area. She's the head of people and corporate affairs at uh, Chippy. You can see there the priorities that are in Jupiter's uh, ESG report, but really understandably, since Chippy's our only asset today, these reflect Chippy's own uh, priorities. So environmental, social, and governance. And I'm going to uh, now spend a moment just letting Mpo talk about the social limb of our ESG uh, work there and what's already occurring to date. Hopefully the audio plays. It does, very good. Our approach of health and safety for our employees is to invest in preventative health care. That means supporting our employees with their spiritual, their mental and physical well-being. 
We also have reactively our healthcare facility on site that supports our employees in case of emergency as well as chronic healthcare management. The overall aim of our health and wellness strategy is to show our employees that we care. We care about their overall health and that we know that when they are well, they bring their wholeness at work. The strategic intent for the community empowerment is twofold. From a business perspective, is to ensure that we do have talent that we can hire. We do have local businesses that we can be able to allocate procurement work and that we are able to operate in a sustainable community. For the community is to ensure that their primary social challenges are heard and they see us being responsive as a business and partnering them in creating impact. Success with regards to community empowerment for our business means CP being able to hire locally, CP being able to procure services and goods locally, and CP being able to move around a thriving community. Thanks, Apo. So the work that Tippy does in this area uh, that we're communicating to investors here through our own ESG report is focused in a couple of areas. One of them is in relation to education, uh, in relation to healthcare, in relation to housing. Tippy does these things both directly with its own investment and community efforts, but also in partnership with the local community uh, development trust, uh, and, and really taking a fairly strategic approach, I think, to investment to try and get certain targeted outcomes. And one of those is obviously in relation to community, as I said there, investing in the building of schools, investing in technology within those schools, investing in uh, teacher training. And all of that is in the local area and all of that is aimed particularly at ensuring that uh, people over the long term are lifted up and they are rightly benefiting from the activity that's occurring in their local area uh, from Chippy. So we can do those things through our own direct employment. Uh, but this is an example of starting, you know, uh, really at an early stage in order to uh, build capability. And we do that in relation to local suppliers as well. We're doing that with a focus on empowerment, um, but there's been some really great work done in relation to uh, education particularly, um, focused on supporting individuals, uh, but also at a system level, new schools, technology within those schools, um, teachers within those areas as well. So the team at SIDE are rightly proud of this, and so are we, and that is why we're telling some of these stories uh, today and also through our reporting and we're very supportive of that sort of thing continuing. Uh, you can see there one case study and this, uh, this presentation is on our website for anyone who wants to go back and have a look at it. A case study of uh, Otwile who, uh, who was supported by Chippy and there are others as well uh, who wouldn't have otherwise been able to study at a tertiary level. Uh, she is now qualified based on her support that she received from Tippy through the local community development trust uh, and is working uh, at a nearby mine. Um, so I'll talk about the electric vehicle batteries part of our strategy in a minute. Um, this is an area that we've been working on for around two years now and as I mentioned we, po we um, published a scoping study earlier this year and we're into the next phase of that study right now. There's a lot of talk around the uh, electric vehicle demand uh, profile and we've showed one there ourselves. Uh, we think that that uh, demand profile is real but it will move around a bit. The end demand for electric vehicles, the battery types within that demand, the cathode uh, chemistries within those batteries, it's all very nascent and so uh, we have strong conviction that that end thematic is real uh, but the the actual uh, growth graph is something that will naturally uh, move around and we think we're seeing that right now for various reasons but we're continuing to do that work in the background. Within batteries the value proposition for manganese is very strong uh, and that is because manganese can bring energy density to the cathode of all battery types in a way that is cheaper uh, in particular and more stable than some of the other 
minerals that would otherwise be used, in particular cobalt. Uh, manganese is more widely available, and as I mentioned, South Africa is already the leading player in the production of manganese, and we see that growing. So it is a natural one that uh, the world is going to need battery-grade manganese. You've got lots of manganese sitting in South Africa. You've also got, from a few mines like ours, um, low-grade manganese, 30 to 32 per cent manganese uh, contained material. That grade of manganese isn't saleable into the steel market profitably through the price cycle, but it's ideally suited to conversion into battery grade manganese. Battery grade manganese, whilst it has to be very pure with respect to other materials, is actually about 31.5% manganese contained. So there's an opportunity here that we're looking at, and a few other mines in South Africa have the same opportunity, to take what's effectively a waste product to the main production of 37% or 44% manganese which is stockpiled in large quantities at Chippy and a few other mines to direct it into valuable applications uh, in battery grade manganese. And these mines here in South Africa, ours included, are ideally placed to be able to do that. So that's why we're focused there. We think that there's uh, a way of taking what we're already doing to vend value into a market that is coming and that market is very new. So obviously there's a bit to do in studying the exact time to be able to enter that market. Uh, but there's a lot to like about our current positioning with a long uh, life manganese mine and this high volume of byproduct material that can be converted into battery grade manganese. So um, we've published the scoping study uh, that pink material you can see on the slide there is battery grade manganese and that was produced from chippy ore using our own process and that was a really important step in the first stage of our study uh, there and that was contained again in the scoping study that's on our website published March of this year. Um, so the economics look quite good. Uh, the market uh, looks quite good, notwithstanding there's still some uncertainty around exactly when that volume appears and therefore exactly when is the right time uh, to enter the market. So that will continue to be a focus. Uh, we can do it. And our view is, um, you know, the hydrometallurgical processes that are used to make battery grade manganese need to be tailored for certain manganese geology. But uh, you can make uh, this material out of South African semi-carbonate ore. There was quite a bit of contention when we started this work as to when that would actually be possible or not. So this is a growing market. This is a part of our business that won't replace uh, the existing business, which will continue. The baseload of our mine and, and the other mines that I've shown you, no doubt, in South Africa will continue to be on servicing that steel uh, thematic, and that is attractive because of growing demand at much lower levels, but moreover, contracting supply from other mines outside of South Africa coming to end of mine life. So that's the core strategy, uh, but we are studying the opportunity which we find quite attractive to take byproduct material from our existing uh, process at Tipi and convert that into battery grade manganese and be ready for when that market starts to take off uh, five, six, seven, eight years time uh, when that occurs. So that's uh, a little bit of an overview of Jupiter and, uh, and of Chippy and our plans to grow. Um, again, we are already invested in South Africa. Uh, we've had a successful experience there. Our plan is to do more of the same, focused only on South Africa, focused only on manganese. Uh, we think um, the mine and the relationships that we're exposed to have a great opportunity to grow and deliver value to South Africa and our plan is to do that in a way that is absolutely focused on following through on the great work that's already been done by uh, mine management and by our partners in South Africa and Jupiter is also very supportive of growing our own business in a way that takes advantage of the opportunity but brings capital to South Africa and delivers that growth in a way that delivers value for all communities around us. So just closing on Jupiter there, um, as you can see, and I made the point earlier, Jupiter's the largest listed pure play manganese miner in the world. We're also the largest ASX listed company focused on South Africa. Uh, it's been a successful story to date. In the last six years, we've paid dividends that are in total greater than our market capitalisation today. And that is because of the very effective operation of the mine in South Africa and the fact that you've got a great uh, mine there to begin with. There is growth upside in the areas that I've mentioned. So we're off to a great start. The, what we have today uh, has performed very well and we're continuing that same dividend policy, but we plan to grow in the areas that I mentioned. 
uh, there will be an opportunity to expand production. There will be an opportunity to consolidate within the Kalahari manganese field and deliver um, synergies and value through that effort. And there will also be an opportunity to produce battery grade manganese in the future and do that um, from South Africa and do all of that in a way that uh, continues the great history that I've shown you of delivering uh, this business and producing manganese in a way that's good for local communities. The final point I'll make there is manganese price upside. Manganese prices are low. Um, Jupiter is um, cash positive through the cycle and has been earnings positive through the cycle as well as I showed you before. Um, but from an investment perspective, obviously ups and downs uh, in a major value driver are good uh, for investment opportunities. So uh, um, Jupiter price is, is quite low right now because the manganese price has also come off in the last uh, month or so. But dial back two or three months earlier, it was at cyclical high levels. And so uh, that's also from an investment proposition perspective, in addition to the great underlying business we have there, and also in relation to the growth upside opportunity, there's also an opportunity to take value from the manganese price cycle. Thank you very much. Thanks, Scott.